So I just got this really great Mr. Alex Tech merch in the mail and I was gonna wear this for this video, but I need I needed somewhere to to put my mic to put my mic. So I have to I have to wear this. Sorry, Alex. Let's talk about advanced customization for DaVinci Resolve titles and presets, and then how to save those changes for future use. I'm gonna show off in this specific video how to customize my recent pack of 50 text presets that are available now, but the methods I'm gonna go over can apply to uh, almost DaVinci Resolve preset or title. It, it's super flexible. Let's get started. I'm here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. I have this video clip of me and over I have three basic title presets from my text pack. Now, these titles and a lot of After Effects presets and templates are fusion macros. I've talked about that in videos before, but an essential thing to remember is that when those macros are made, the person creating them has to specify which specific controls they want to give the end user control over on the edit page. They select those options in uh, the menu when they're creating that macro and then it's all packaged up. And then here on the edit page, if I select this first preset here in the inspector under title, I have these very basic controls that I enabled uh, to give you control over this effect. You can change what it says, the font, the color, the size, tracking, and then uh, motion blur. But there is still so much more you can do with these presets, you just need to go one layer deeper. And like I've shown off a few times before, you go that one layer deeper by making sure your title is selected in the inspector you have this little icon to load up this instance of the preset in the Fusion page. The Fusion page will load up and you will see your preset represented by this little grouped stack of nodes here. And just like everything else in the Fusion page, whatever you do on the Fusion page goes back into a media out node that sends it back to be visible on the edit page. And if we select this group node here, you see that we have the exact same options in the inspector. But if you double click, you will see that inside this group where there could be any number of nodes, all these presets just have one node, the standard text plus node. The text plus node is super powerful as we are about to see, but all of the variation in all of these presets uh, come from animating and working specifically inside the one text plus node. I love it. But as soon as we click directly on that text plus node, the inspector changes and now we have all of the controls that come on any standard text plus node. Importantly, we have even more controls than you have access to if you use the text plus effect on the edit page. And that's because we have this modifiers tab here. If you click that, you see this anim curves modifier, um, which is really um, how a lot of these specific effects are built out specifically, how they have animation that works in any frame rate. It's very cool, but it's very complicated. I've said I wanna dive more into anim curves and I definitely do. It's super powerful, especially for creating these presets. But if we jump back to tools, we have all these different layout transform and super interestingly, the shading elements options. I really like all of the presets in the pack I just released, but they are all plain white text by default. But if you just jump this one layer deeper, you have access to the full uh, shading engine in the text plus node. And all of these elements are still at their default setting. So number two, if you enable that, it gives you this red outline. You can pull that down so it's black, pull up thickness, um, affect how it treats edges. And then you could go back to shading element one, which is by default this cortex, set it to something like this pretty vibrant yellow, and you have a completely uh, different feeling text preset. Specifically, when I've seen simple text animation like this, um, especially on like short form content, a lot of times they have this big uh, punchy outline or they have eye catching colors and uh, multiple layers like this shading element controls gives you. But let's jump to this second instance to talk about uh, how crazy, how complex this can get really quick. Again, I'm clicking this button to load it into the Fusion page, double clicking, selecting the text plus node inside of that. Then we can jump over shading and it gives you up to eight shading elements. It can get pretty wild. So let's just start stacking. We will turn on the second element. Let's make this a cool little cyan color. Uh, we'll change this position, we'll offset it a little bit. 
Um, you have tons of options, whether you want it to be solid text or an outline, or even this like box around the text, which is super powerful, because you can have this be around characters or just the more defined text box or the word. It's super flexible. And actually one of my presets has this enabled by default and gives you a really powerful background because this does dynamically scale to the text. It's cool. But if I wanted this to just be a simple colored drop shadow, you could paste that on. We could come to shading element three, turn that on, which gives like a little drop shadow above that. Shading element four, turn that on. That's that blue border. And then from five onward, they don't have any defaults. It just gives you all of the controls. So you could do some pretty funky stuff. One super important setting to note, in position, you have priority. You're layering all these things on top of each other. And even though they go from elements one to eight, you can shift this priority so that one appears or disappears behind any other number of shading elements. I'm gonna turn off the shading element four. So when I come to shading element five, I can make this this sort of blue background again around this characters. We will change that to line. And then if I come down to size, pull down Y. So it's just this thin little line. Then we can change this position. And then, hey, we have an underline that dynamically stretches to the text. And all of this is then acted upon by the animation. If I go back to my timeline and come out, there is nothing there and all of it comes in at once. One final thing I wanna show off. I'm going to my third example here, opening the Fusion page. And I talked about that modifiers tab. It's super powerful and we're gonna use it here. I'm gonna change this text to a, a simple uh, two line phrase, something like, see this, ta-da. Cool. I'm gonna right click here and go to character level styling. Super powerful and nothing changes. You see it does keyframe here, but if I go back to modifiers, then I have this character level styling option. And now, first I am just going to make this all caps because it's a little powerful, but with character level styling in the viewer, if I just draw a box over this, ta-da, you see that it gives you these little green bounding boxes. And now we have these text controls that will only affect this text. This is super powerful if you want uh, more uh, complex styling and positioning, um, but you don't want multiple text plus nodes uh, stacked on top of each other or in frame. You can do much more with one text plus node than you ever thought possible. I have just this ta-da selected and I can just pull up this size and then scale up this vertical as well. And then back in tools in layout, I have this, see this, ta-da! One node, uh, advanced character level styling gives you this control and it is on a per character basis. If I hop back to modifiers, character level styling, I could take this, I could increase the spacing just between those characters. I could do individual shear. Super powerful. A lot of this is super powerful if you haven't caught on yet. And then we go back to tools and on top of all of this, we can then add this uh, element three, which is the simple black drop shadow. And then back here, whew, you have this much more dynamic text effect all from this one source node. But let's say you just went through all of this work to customize a title to be something really cool, something really unique, something you really like. These settings are not going to be saved to the root preset. If I bring in a new instance of this text scale bounce preset, the one this is built off of, it's still just this basic text here message that comes up. And that's because whenever you deal with these presets, you are dealing uh, with an instance of that core fusion macro. But there is a super simple way to save any changes you make uh, for future work. I lightly touched on this when I was talking about uh, one of my past big presets, Proto, uh, but the same process works here as well, and that is power bins. Power bins are super cool. If you don't have them, you can come up to uh, View, come down and select Show Power Bins, and then they should show up here in your media pool. If you don't see that, it's got this little toggle on up here. You can see I've built a, a number of nested folders here, but here I have one just for this video. 
And here's what's important about power bins. Power bins exist across all your projects. If you open up a completely new project in DaVinci Resolve, and if in a previous project you dropped a uh, video clip or an image or a piece of music or an effect into the power bin, it will exist there. So if I take this text preset that we customized to this crazy degree, and I just drag this into this power bin folder, you will see it shows up here. Here you even have the option to rename this best preset one. And then if I open up a completely new timeline, da da, create that and I navigate to power bins to that folder, that preset is still there and I can drag and drop that. I'll pull in some video so you can see that as well. And it animates on with all those modifications that we made earlier. So any Fusion uh, title or generator, um, if it's on your timeline as a specific instance, you can just drag that to a power bin and any changes you made there are saved for all your projects going forward. Now, if you have a preset or template that is a fusion effect, something you have to apply directly to a clip, you can always apply that to an adjustment layer and then drag that adjustment layer into a power bin to save all of those settings changes. It's a little more finicky and I hope Resolve rolls out a, a better way to do that going forward. Uh, but for now, that's just how you have to work with specifically fusion effects. I'm super excited to get this lesson out specifically um, in relation to the text pack I released. There are a lot of presets in their pack, but they are in intentionally uh, focused on the animation. And I hope this video really gives you the tools to uh, customize those in unique and powerful way that are super unique to you. And then you can just save those presets in power bins and have them always at your disposal just to click away. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.